Hello to everyone. Uh, welcome to our new webinar. It's Monday, February 5th. And uh, it's 3 p.m. here in Europe. So let me know if everything uh, everything is fine, please. Can you see my screen? Can you hear my voice? I barely talked last uh, last Monday. I really didn't feel well, so I really hope this time will be uh, will be much better. Um, so, if someone can just confirm in the chat box that everything is fine, please. <clears throat> so that we can start with the webinar. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I can see that uh, we have some regular users here. Um, Brian is here, Hugo is here, Jova is here, uh, KM, Atlanta, uh, Paulo Rodriguez is here. Hello, everyone. So, um, as always, I will walk you through this uh, and navigate you through um, the FX market. Uh, we have seen a pretty interesting. Uh, moves on Friday as you know jobs again came out very strong and even before that Powell on Wednesday somehow noted that they will most likely stay on hold on March okay so there was there were plenty of speculation that uh, from analysts that maybe the Fed will cut in March but now when Powell um, said on this press conference that they need more evidence that they are on the right track with inflation and um, after this and that they are waiting on more economic data and after strong jobs data of course it looks like that these potential rate cuts for for march are off the table and that's why we are seeing some very interesting and strong move to the upside on us yields as well as us dollar obviously at the same time stocks are still doing good they are still in uptrend okay now later today uh let me just check an hour i think that we have this will be in ICM services PMI, uh, PMI from from the US will be released in uh, around an hour. So this will be another indication uh, for the Fed. Definitely, if it's in uh, <coughs> it's definitely here in expansion territory. So if we will see closer numbers towards 50 or even lower, then of course this could be a new but, but, uh, a new important data for for the Fed and uh, investors as well, obviously. So um what are my thoughts regarding the elliott wave uh, elliott wave um, structure in general well i still think that the us yields are going to see more weakness it looks like that this current recovery that we are seeing uh, since jobs data were released uh, i think that it's still fine to track this as a correction of course it's a it's going to be much more complex than i thought but still it's going to be a correction because i think that this drop from 2023 highs was an impulse okay so i'm tracking the counter trend movement and some very nice resistance remains around 38.2 percent okay so it can be here potential flat now wave c underway or maybe even a triangle if we we'll keep moving sideways and let's say that we come back towards four percent in the next 24 hours or so okay um so my in my my idea is that the US yields will come to the downside and the dollar index will also turn down as well. If you take a look on um, on dollar index, and by the way, if you are uh, our member, then you will know that we highlighted 104 and 104.30 as a very important potential resistance level. Okay, so we are now at this level around 104.40 here. So we are testing the former wave four swing high. So in my opinion, that's still a very important level for a potential new sell off. OK, we will see if this sell off will show up. But for now, to count this as an impulse here from that low. Well, let me just show you the idea here. Well, this 
may not work the best because you can see that wave 4 traded into the territory of wave 1 and wave 3 was relatively short okay so i'm still thinking that this can be a complex corrective recovery you're at the 61.8 percent and at this potential wave for resistance as i said so it's ideal swing zone for potential new sell-off we today it's also monday and i can see some sharp flows which is normal after that sharp move that we have seen on friday it's a little bit of continuation but when you have a monday very strong moves then those moves could be potentially uh, retraced on tuesday wednesday so we'll see if maybe we'll get any kind of just uh, temporary pullback but if we see a very strong drop and break this 10270 supports or even just if we see move close to these levels with an impulsive price action then i would be willing to look for potential dollar shorts okay um, so i still think that technical levels are very interesting very important is the 61.8 percent retracement and saying here that i will be turning bullish on dollar would really not make sense okay so for now i will still stick with the plan to consider potential reversal uh, from this spot but of course i want market to confirm that this reversal is actually happening if from any reason we will see by the end of the week price let's say stepping into territory above 106 then i will have to adjust the fuse and i will most likely look for a higher degree correction here on dollar index with the next resistance around 108 109 okay so for now let's see what will happen here in that area in the next um in the next few days uh, now if we take a look here on euro dollar you can see that this one is also coming obviously to the downside of course uh, also approaching this very important level uh, that goes back to december december 08 also you can see that we have a lot of overlaps here within this current decline okay so firstly i thought that we will stabilize around here around that area around 108 but we really haven't seen any kind of aggressive buying firstly there was some interesting recovery here okay it was on thursday a day after the uh, after uh, the fat but then we really haven't seen any close above that fat high so i marked here fat high and i marked here the ecb high okay so i think that these two levels are very very important a lot of stops obviously are placed above it but i want to see something more aggressively buying and i want to see a continuation higher before i may say that we are really turning here okay uh, so if we see a bounce here in five waves and make a very strong daily close above these swing highs then i think that would be headed much higher and that the trend will change but for now this intraday trend is still in favor of the us dollar don't forget that if if i'm thinking that market will turn around maybe i will be right but for now that's still not happening it's but it's important what is happening okay so for now the dollar is still is still um, strong but as i said we are approaching some very interesting and um, an attractive potential supports here in my opinion um, now if we take a look on cable cable also came to the downside uh, it didn't manage to broke um, the trend line resistance here uh, <clears throat> here we have a four hour chart so uh, we've been tracking this trend line resistance i thought that potentially we have a triangle in a way four as you know triangle is a continuation pattern okay it's a very tricky sideways um, pattern uh, by two contracting trend lines and it can occur in wave b wave 4 or wave x position here i firstly thought that potentially we are in a wave 4 but we wanted to see this 1 to 770 broken okay to make sure that we are headed higher that resistance line it didn't happen we have seen after the jobs data market closed very bearish here and even break lower today out of this triangle so i think that now we are approaching this uh, second very important swing support again this goes back to this uh, december start of december mid of december levels and also you have the 38.2 percent as well here which as you know it's probably the most important fifth when it comes to retracement of the fourth waves so also another thing that is very important to highlight is that we have a triangle here in wave b right so because this is a triangle in the middle of this drop 
it cannot be wave two. Let's say that someone want to say, want to label this, that this is wave one, wave two, and wave three, wave four will move to the downside. Well, this will not work because triangle can never occur in a wave two position, okay? That's one of the Elliott wave rules. So in my opinion, in my opinion, this still could be very interesting. I know that it's a pretty strong, aggressive drop that usually will try to confuse a lot of traders, but for now I will stick with my analysis here and will try to look for potential bounces and will will observe the price action very closely this week because if we can recover back into this pivot area here okay uh, of that triangle of that recent mass here then i think that we are really going to see more upside because then current bearish momentum which by the way is trying to increase would be reversed and if that would be the case that would be another indication for me that um, that bulls are still in the game here okay so for now this looks still like a very nice potential cor corrective uh, corrective retracement now if we also take a look on on aussie well in general commodity currencies are very weak um, because keep in mind crude oil came to the downside we have metals also coming to the downside and um, in Australia, there were reports last week that inflation came to the downside. Uh, but before that, there were speculations that maybe even RBI could be looking for another additional 25 basis point increase if inflation would be still higher. Of course, I think it's still around 4%. It's still high, but much lower than the previous reading. So th that's one of the reasons why also Aussie is under pressure, not to mention China. Uh, Chinese stocks again have seen some uh, some uh, weakness over the last few sessions, despite some brokerages who are not allowed to uh, to offer customers uh, short selling. So it's still a uh, very interesting, uh, very in interesting situation in China. They are trying to do everything to support their market activity, but for now that's not helpful to us at least not yet. Uh, but from a related wave perspective, again, we are at the potential support zone, 61.8%, 78.6%. If we'll see a bounce here again, then this uh, bullish count, bullish interpretation still have a chance. If not, if we'll just keep moving to the downside and break the important 78.6%, then I will adjust my view, st uh, step back a little bit and look at the higher degree timeframes of what is going on. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look also on uh, on dollar Mexican peso. <clears throat> now why I'm bringing on dollar Mexican peso is still because I somehow have a, a lot of confidence in Mexican peso in general because it's been doing and moved very well um, over the last few years also from an Elliott wave perspective we had a very nice um, ongoing um, patterns that kept pushing the prices to the downside so we were doing quite well with dollar Mexican peso over the last two years or so so we will try to stick with this downtrend that in my opinion is still in progress so what I'm looking at here is that we are just trying to we just slow down here for uh, for temporary period of time in my opinion okay it's sideways price action that sooner or later will see more weakness so what we are seeing is that dollar index okay or dollar in general is testing higher levels okay against other currencies as you know as is low very low you have euro dollar testing lower support levels okay but what we are seeing on dollar mexican peso is just trying to move sideways here you can still see that it's not anywhere close to this previous minor swing highs that's by the way the daily chart okay so i still think that mexican peso in general is strong but even if dollar will keep pushing higher dollar mexican peso will still reach just ideal nice potential resistance around uh, zone around 17.60 so in my opinion that's still a very good potential area from where we could see a continuation lower not to mention that this previous recovery here was most likely a corrective movement ideally way for potentially completed if not completed then it's still in progress but then uh, it should be like a potential way for here if we market will 
keep chopping around here in this uh, in this contracting range. But still, I think that that's a very nice and interesting uh, interesting resistance zone. Okay, so <clears throat> if we see another pop up here, which based on the very short term perspective, which we also shared with our members regularly, it suggests that we could see a little bit of more upside. But then watch out uh, that resistance closely here. Also, um, <clears throat> let me take a look on uh, on crude oil. Now, um, crude oil has made some very. Uh, in just a second, okay. Crude oil has made some very interesting, actually a beautiful price action, beautiful reaction. Now. I don't remember if I really shared crude oil last time or I did not, but I, we had two wave counts, okay? Um, the first wave count was that potentially we could be looking for a very strong wave free to the downside. This major 80, 17, 79 to 80 dollars resistance area would be taken out. It was the upper line of this trading channel and also this horizontal resistance of the previous fourth wave here, as you can see. So this was the key point. We should have seen a break, a decisive break higher to say that wave three is in the cards. We also had another wave count which showed that maybe after all this is going to be only an ABC rally if this resistance will help. So last week at the start of last week, we didn't know what will actually happen. We just waited on market to make a, re, uh, to make a decision. So what actually happened till now? Well, we are seeing a very nice and beautiful reversal to the downside. You can see a very sharp and strong price action already trying to break this trend line resistance. So I think that that's a correction and that we will see more weakness. Okay, because impulses, as you know, are very sharp, very strong one. Okay, uh, also, uh, one of the motive waves that show direction of a trend is the leading diagonal which occurred here. So that was also a five wave movement. And that's then a three wave contra trend movement. So it means that this is your trend and this is the contra trend. And contra trend structures are made by three seven swings. Okay, so I think that that's a very beautiful ABC movement. And uh, I think that more weakness here could be seen even towards $68. And then if we fall below it very sharply, we could go much, much lower here. So what's, um, what is crude oil telling us? Well, it's very important for inflation, as you know. So inflation is still the main problem, right? And if, and if crude oil will keep moving to the downside, okay, it, it could help to bring inflation down as well. So in other words, this could help to US yields to come back from that resistance on the 10 year that we tracked earlier. And this could later on have also bearish impact on dollar index. So bearish crude oil, it's not necessarily bullish for dollar. Yes, it is in a different circumstances. But now when inflation is the main story, that's that's not the case. So this turn to the downside on crude oil can be actually very helpful for dollar index to potentially stop at the resistance as well of course if this crude oil weakness will will resume and not just last one or two days okay so it must keep going to make sure that energies sector are really is really coming to the downside regarding prices okay i hope this makes sense now let's take a look also on silver so <clears throat> last week i talked about the silver we also been long and uh, also shared one idea and then pulled the stops higher um, ahead of non-farm payrolls report stopped out on uh, with the, after this um, after this reversal to the downside which is very strong of course it still can be a counter trend movement that can belong to an ongoing uptrend but for now it's a little bit tricky situation unless we rally back towards 23 dollars then i still think there is a chance so it looks like it's a little bit of neutral zone right now uh, we could even see more weakness for this wave E that could be much more complex. But whenever this is the case, at, or if I'm not really sure regarding the short term structure, uh, well, still just zoom out a little bit, check the daily time frame. OK, so what is the daily time frame? Well, the daily time frame still shows a little bit of um, triangle here, potential triangle that could, I think, uh, lead us higher maybe later this year um, 
we will see how the market will react at this lower trend line support which by the way still hasn't been really tested so calling a potential breakdown is still too soon especially now when you also have uh, us yields trying to maybe to watch for resistance high resistance for a wave c this week and dollar index trading around 61.8 percent so we'll see what happens down here around if we go even 21 dollars is still uh, 2150 still very strong and important support support for uh, for silver okay uh, now <clears throat> let's take a look also maybe on nasdaq 100 because we shared nasdaq 100 uh, last time as you know uh, we said that we are seeing prices in a way free potentially approaching resistance what i would be watching is this upper line of this Elliott wave channel so i connected the lower the swing low of wave two and wave four and then put the parallel line at the top of a wave three and in ideal circumstances okay where wave three is an extended you will see that wave five can reach this upper trend line and potentially maybe see a, some little bit of throw over and then a reversal lower there you have also the 261.8 percent as well so in that area it could be very interesting 18,000 also very important psychological level as well but when looking at the intraday time frames we shared this one live if i remember correctly in our webinar so we said that still even if we are at the potential approaching potential resistances on a daily time frame the smaller time frame does not show a completed wave structure so even if we have important fips let's say on the daily time frame the important is the Elliott wave structure as well okay so as long you have higher highs higher swing lows on the smaller time frames while you have the pullbacks in free waves you should stay with an uptrend and so far that still was only free wave retracement we are seeing some very nice push to the upside and if you look closely here this can even be another waves one two three four five so let me just try to level here live okay this could be one two three four five uh, these are going to be red labels uh, sorry black labels okay uh, and then what you would expect is an abc pullback right so after this retracement i would be looking for more upside here okay because clearly clearly the previous previous pullback here unfolded in three waves right <clears throat> so in my opinion we are going to see more upside potentially breaking this level in in a, in a few days okay and then let's see what happens around 18,000 very big level also it equals to S&P 500 that is approaching around to around 5,000 right so uh, keep in mind keep an eye on this um, on this uh, <clears throat> developments now let's take a look at some single stocks uh, okay so uh we tracked paypal okay um still not going anywhere uh still looks like it's an ending diagonal um there will be uh as you know earnings report so we will see if maybe we can uh, see some interesting volatility here if it can be to the downside it can be to the upside but i think that sooner or later we will see some interesting levels towards 70 dollars if not higher it's still an unfilled gap here um, also if we look here at adobe we shared this one as well uh, two weeks back i think we also made this free video analysis i said that more upside is in the cards here uh, because the pullback was in three waves the gap here was still open to the upside so there are also some other interesting developments as well um, i'm will keep an eye on this one bank of america because we have some very nice wedge that was broken here uh, at the end of 2023 it's a very nice beautiful impulse and now i assume that we could see some kind of a pullback here for a wave b maybe this one could last something similar like we have seen here in wave four and wave two regarding time so it would be too soon to say maybe that wave b is completed because notice that it's i'm looking for wave b of the same degree but still thinking that 
if we get a little bit of more co complex and more sideways in time um, and maybe slightly deeper in price i think that this would be quite interesting uh, interesting for potential more upside even some bullish setups here um, could show up uh, also i'm looking at uh, coke as well so if coca-cola that's daily chart notice very nice free wave setback from that 2022 highs beautiful impulsive reaction higher now you're approaching this potential trend line here trend line resistance of this corrective channel which um, may not be necessarily broken just yet maybe we'll see some more complex sideways price action here still within this downtrend channel but ideally this will be a pullback for a wave two potential flat correction okay so if we can break below six below 59 or so i think that very nice support would be around 56 to 57 dollars okay so this one is also on my watch list and i will track very closely because i think that there is a lot more upside potential while the market is holding this 51 level okay um, <clears throat> now let's take a look also maybe on on cryptos so uh we have that's by the way that's our members area we have uh here okay that's a crypto total market cap you can see that that was a very nice impulsive reaction here higher on the intraday time frames so it looks like that in the short term we can see more gains because even if it's correction it's incomplete so watch out for more upside uh, even if you look at the total market cap that exclude Bit bitcoin it means that even altcoins could see potential more more weakness here uh, we also shared uh, solana as well in our free charts free blog post here i think it's here okay that also has a very nice potential bullish development so we we see a lot of altcoins also still looking good but when it comes to bitcoin it's a little bit tough situation i know that obviously a lot of uh, bitcoin will impact a lot of other traders decisions um, for regarding our, uh, other altcoins but generally speaking here even bitcoin <clears throat> even if it's just in a temporary recovery it's room for 45,000, maybe even slightly higher so what we are looking at now here is unfolding a corrective price action could be wave b maybe already finished here around 41,000. if we get a little bit lower today towards 42,000 or something uh, then i think that way b will be a little bit more complex maybe triangle or something but still part of this ongoing ongoing recovery that in my opinion can can resume into this area here okay that zone so that zone here around 45000 46000 that would be will be a bit um, tough to break in my opinion because keep in mind that there was a lot of uh, interesting uh, similar levels that were rejected later on here if you look back at december swing highs so i think that this zone here is also going to be very important uh for this for february as well also <clears throat> on another note if we think that we are in a higher degree correction way four here then somehow it could be it should be similar in distance or in time compared to wave two which was a flat here okay so saying that wave four is finished here can be a little bit too soon but what's interesting about the current recovery if we go back to the four hour time frame here on bitcoin is that this drop can be counted in three waves but it doesn't mean that wave four is finished it this free wave structure can belong to triangle can belong to a flat where even wave b is allowed anywhere close or even slightly higher back to these levels here okay so in the short term i think that bitcoin is looking very interesting for to move into this area as long as we are holding these recent swing lows okay okay traders um that's it for me for today uh, i hope that you enjoyed this presentation um i can someone's asking for home builders uh, so i'm not really sure if you're our member or not uh, but i can surely look in if you are in our chat room if not try to contact me on twitter and i will uh, i will definitely take some time and look whenever that's possible from my side okay traders enjoy your day and talk to you soon talk to you soon bye